Hello, this is uh, Mr. Mike for the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. I have such exciting news. <clears throat> First of all, thank you for joining me live on Facebook. We do this every single day during the quarantine, and we are up to episode 81. Can you believe it? 81 straight days we've been doing this. And the exciting news that I have for you is, as I'm keeping track of every dinosaur we've discussed in alphabetical fashion, and also which episode it occurred in. I've noticed that we have covered every single letter of the alphabet, including X, Y, and Z. We have several under the letter A. We have B covered, C, D, E, F, G. We only have one E and one F, and one J, which is kind of a tougher one to do. We had Heawati back in episode 70. So we have covered Every single alpha, letter of the alphabet, except for one, the W. And today, we take care of the W. And I'm going to write it on the list right now. The name of the animal? I'm not kidding. Wendy Ceratops. Wendy Ceratops for episode 81. Now, there are a few other W dinosaurs out there. Um, what makes this one interesting is if I would say that to someone, hey, have you heard of Wendy Ceratops? They'd probably think I was kidding around. Most of the time, dinosaurs have tough names. Lots of syllables. Do you think this is named after a person named Wendy, or are we going in a different direction? Hmm, take a guess. Actually... The answer is, we are going after a person named Wendy. It's named after a woman named Wendy Slobata. Now, Wendy Slobata is apparently a famous fossil finder in Canada. She was uh, roaming around southern Alberta in 2010, and this woman just seems to have a knack. She has a sixth sense, one of her colleagues have said, for finding and locating dinosaur bones. Uh, and the, the scientists say, I wish I had that. They, they you know, dream about having the kind of uh, talent that Wendy just has, this innate sense for finding dinosaur bones. So took place in Canada back in 2010. She literally uh, saw something popping out of, out of the ground, recognized it as a certain kind of bone, looked at it and said, this is kind of unique. So she chipped away at it, very carefully retrieved it, took it out of the ground and took it in very short order to two colleagues of hers by the name of David Evans and Michael Ryan. Uh, Michael Ryan is uh, the paleontologist of record, the curator for the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, and uh, David Evans also works at a museum. So these folks know a lot about dinosaurs, and they know about the particular prowess that Wendy has in finding dinosaurs. So they take a look at the skeleton, the, this little piece of bone that they found, and they're like, Wendy? This is quite a specimen you have here. What did they do? All three of them hopped in the car and sped off. They drove two hours immediately after seeing this to take a look at where she had found this specimen. She, of course, the moment she found it, put the coordinates into her phone so that the GPS could find exactly where this uh, location was and they can get back to it. They were so excited when they looked at it that they hopped in the car and left immediately. Drove two hours just to get back to the site. Now, once they got there, they found more. And boy, did they ever find more. Over the next uh, several weeks, months, even uh, a year or two, they continued to excavate over six tons of earth and scraping it away a little bit at a time, and they unearthed nearly 200 different uh, specimens. Uh, many of the same animal. They attribute basically all of these to this particular dinosaur, Wendy Ceratops, named after Wendy because she's so good at finding fossils. So it looks like your Triceratops. This one is a little bit different. This is a little more ornate than the old Triceratops. This is the fancy frill. Wendy Ceratops has these curved horns at the top of her frill and she has a few of them, and they all face forward. And then she does have two spikes above the eyes. And then she has a bit larger horn 
on the nose. So that's what makes Wendy Ceratops a bit unique from all the other Ceratopsians. So Wendy did in fact discover not only a new uh, species, but a brand new genus of Ceratopsian. Now this Ceratopsian existed before Triceratops. This goes back about 79, maybe 78 million years ago. It was about 20 feet long, so it was a little bit smaller than the Triceratops we all know and love. Definitely herbivorous. Uh, it may have been able to rear up on its hind legs like this model is showing, but uh, probably stayed quadrupedal most of the time. Has the famous curved parrot-like beak. No teeth in the front, but had some teeth in the cheeks so it could chew. Uh, and those teeth, of course, were leaf-shaped, like uh, most Ceratopsians. And uh, we know that it was found in southern Alberta. Now, it is one of the oldest large-bodied horned dinosaurs ever discovered. So it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's one of the oldest. Did I say largest? It's one of the oldest ever discovered. Uh, its remains are in the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto. So if you want to plan a day trip when the quarantine is over, I suggest you go out and you look for Wendy Ceratops. We think that uh, Wendy might be possibly, some folk, folks have called her, not the dinosaur, they have called her the best fossil finder in the world. That's how well respected she is. In fact, uh, she all started, she started this all about 16 years of age. She found uh, what turned out to be dinosaur eggs at 16. Well, she's had quite a career finding uh, the remains of, of many, many uh, dinosaurs, and many of them are very significant. Now, these guys, her friends, David Evans and Michael Ryan, they were waiting for the time to name a dinosaur after her. Because of her contribution to the, uh, the science of uh, paleontology, they were waiting for the proper time to name a dinosaur after her. And Wendy Ceratops was the one because they found so many uh, specimens of it. They know what it looked like, and it was very unique. So they had this up their sleeve for quite some time. And speaking of sleeve... Wendy was so excited that they got the, that she finally had a dinosaur named after her. She rolled her sleeve up and went out and got a special Wendy Ceratops tattoo to commemorate the naming of a dinosaur after herself. Pretty cool, huh? So, this is episode 81 of Mr. Mike's Dino a Day brought to you by the Mechanicsburg Learning Center. Thank you so much for watching live. Thank you so much for going to YouTube and watching uh, all the Mr. Mike screen only videos. Now this will be video number 81, if you can believe it, all about Wendy Ceratops. So uh, thank you for sharing these on Facebook, and we will continue to do this as long as we possibly can. Wendy Ceratops. This poem is more about a woman keen enough to find some dino bones that to most others, they would just be blind. Her name's Wendy Slobata, and her skills are so extreme the scientists talk of her gift, and they all like to dream. Some say she has abilities to sense a dinosaur. She seems to know just where to dig, which hillside to explore. They wonder how she's able to discern what others can't. Amazingly, she can succeed where evidence is scant. So Wendy scoured South Alberta looking for some bones. She traipsed throughout the region, kicking dust, moving stones, and soon she was rewarded when she found a real bone bed, and little did she know the specimens were so widespread. She thought it looked like something science hadn't yet secured. Her education told her that this should not be ignored. She took it very carefully and showed it to her friends, and sure enough, for common bones, this specimen transcends. So Wendy, David Evans, Michael Ryan, all three went right back to where she found it. Finding more was their intent. She had no way of knowing when she found that single bone that hundreds more laid closely by. That bone was not alone. It was a ceratopsian, a dinosaur with frills, that waited patiently below southern Alberta hills. The frill had several horns that pointed forward and curved down. A larger horn sat on the nose, a truly stately crown. It's older than Triceratops, much older, I must say, and it was fortunate that Wendy wandered by that day. In gratitude, Evans and Ryan named it after her, the Wendy Ceratops, named for a dino whisperer. Wendy Slobata, soon to be more famous, fossil finder.
And now she has a dinosaur named after her and a brand new beautiful tattoo to show for it. So the animal was named in uh, 2015. So we've known about Wendy Ceratops for about five years. And I'm assuming by now that, 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 that tattoo on Wendy's arm has stopped hurting. So thanks so much for watching this on Facebook. Thanks for sharing them. Thanks for going to YouTube and uh, subscribing and watching all the other videos we've made. For the Mechanicsburg Learning Center, this is Mr. Mr. Mike saying thank you for watching. And here's to Wendy Ceratops.